Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest. A couple minutes late getting going here, but nonetheless, let's get cracking. Hi, Amar. Hi, Zainab. Monal. Sheng Hung. Good to see you. This class is brought to you by aehelp.com for the academic version of the exam, check us out there. And for the general version, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. You can also download our academic app from your app store, search for academic I-E-L-T-S help. Hi Preeti, hi Alexander. Okay, this class is a question and answer session for members. So members, this class is for you. Everybody's welcome to watch, to become a member. Click the join button beside the subscribe button. If you don't see it, send me an email. I can help you out. My email is adrian at aehelp.com. And every few weeks uh, for the past few months, we've done this uh, question and answer uh, session for members, among, of course, other classes, just to give you members a chance to really dive deep into your questions about the exam. So Amar, Zainab, Monal, Cheng Hung, Preeti, Alexander, this is your chance to really uh, sass out how this exam works and ask me any questions that may come to mind so that I can help you as best as possible gain confidence and clarity. And then later today, we will have a speaking part three class for everyone that will be practice uh, and strategy for speaking part three of the IELTS exam. So um, I do have, of course, a lot of our exams available to us. Uh, while our members are thinking about questions, I'll show you our website. So this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click that red button to join. And if you are studying for the general IELTS, check us out at this website with the green background. Click that red button to join us there. All right, so um, any questions, members, about the IELTS exam? Any general questions about the uh, structure of the test or differences in the exam or how to prepare, when to start preparing, these kinds of ideas? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Maybe you're thinking of some questions. I'll get to them as I see them in the chat. Let me ask you a question, uh, members that are here. I'm sure some more will be joining in as well. Uh, here's my question is, do you have a clear study plan? Okay. So that's my question to you while I look at your questions. Answer this one for me. Do you have an IELTS study plan for your exam with a daily schedule? Okay. So Preeti is asking, what should I read to improve reading comprehension? on a daily basis. Saman Jam is saying, I have a problem in the speaking section. Okay, Preeti, I'll take your question. Uh, meanwhile, do answer my question here, which is, do you have a clear IELTS study plan with a daily schedule? So this is me asking this question. And Preeti is asking the question, what should I read on a daily basis to improve my comprehension? Uh, 
Okay, so my answer, Preeti, is coming up. Amar says, yes, I have a plan, but it does not work. Okay, uh, can you give us a kind of a brief idea of your plan, Amar? So Shang Hung says, yes, I have one. I use a calendar to schedule all the sections in the daytime and go online, go to online courses at night. Uh, Shang Hung, that's really good. So it sounds like you definitely have a clear plan uh, and you're sticking to it. Okay, Monal says, yes, I have one. I started from last week. Okay, that's good, Monal. I give 30 minutes for each section except speaking. Um, what's going on with speaking, Monal? Why don't you give speaking time or do you give more than 30 minutes for speaking? So what's going on with the speaking, Monal? And honestly, you need to do more, Monal. So 30 minutes for each section, I wouldn't do that. Instead, I would do one hour for two sections on one day and then one hour for another two sections on another day. 30 minutes is a very short time, Manal, to try to get deep into listening or reading or writing. 30 minutes isn't even enough to write a full task too. So instead of doing 30 minutes for all four sections on one day, Manal, if you only have two hours to study, then instead focus one hour on writing, one hour on reading, and then the next day switch. One hour on uh, speaking, one hour on listening. Okay, I think that's a better plan. It's a more effective plan. Okay. Okay, Amar says, I listen to a listening exam every day. Yeah, that's very little, Amar. So just listening to a listening exam every day is not enough. Um, you need to do the homework, Amar. So you need to organize your time differently. Oh, Sheng Hung, yeah, you use our services for task one, task two. That's really good. That's very, very useful. So you get our feedback. That's fantastic. Okay, uh, Preeti, I'm going to get back to your answer, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the study plan. It sounds like many of you don't really have a very clear study plan, and that's not good. Um, so Preeti, uh, before I talk more about the study plan, on a daily basis, Number one, or A, the answer, I'm going to have a few answers here, is A, you should have a novel that is your level. You understand 80 to 90% of the text. And you should read from this novel at least uh, 30 minutes each day. So just jumping back to Preeti's question a little bit, so I'm jumping around slightly here between uh, study plan and Preeti's question. Preeti's saying, what should I read on a daily basis? And Preeti, you know, you can think about this as part of your study plan. So your study plan should definitely include uh, daily reading practice. Why? Because reading helps improve all areas of communication. So it helps with your speaking, your writing, and even your listening. Okay, so reading is very, very important. Your daily study plan must include at least... 60 to 90 minutes of reading. Reading helps to improve all areas of language and communication. So that's why it's so important. It helps you to improve your grammar, your vocabulary, uh, your fluency, your listening skills, your speaking skills, your writing skills, especially if you read out loud, okay? So spend 15 minutes to read aloud, okay? 
So spending 15 minutes to read aloud is going to help you to uh, improve your fluency, your pronunciation, even if you're not sure of the correct uh, pronunciations of the words, as long as you're trying, it is improving your pronunciation and um, your comprehension. So it's multiple sensory integration. So 15 minutes of aloud reading is a good idea. Okay. Now, Preeti, uh, again, what should you read on a daily basis? You should find a novel that's your level. That means uh, you understand 80 to 90%. It's okay if you don't understand 100% because you need to push yourself to learn new vocabulary. Okay? And you should read your novel at least 30 minutes a day. Now, what kind of a novel should you read? You should read, and this is very important as well, you should read non-fiction novels. What does that mean, members? What is a non-fiction novel? So Preeti says, I read a novel, but not regularly, sir. Preeti, regular exercise, regular reading, regularity is the key to success. Being regular, being consistent is critical, Preeti, to being successful in life and in being healthy. So you have to do it, okay? You have to do it. So read every single day. So what is a nonfiction novel? So Omar says it's maybe a scientific novel. Nguyen Viet, good to see you in class, says it's maybe a social psychology book. Could be. Okay. Um, science novels are generally nonfiction. Nonfiction, fiction means imagination. Okay. Uh, fiction is the opposite of real. Nonfiction simply means real. So it's something that's true. Okay. Um, Preeti, mythology is not good because mythology is fiction. It's not nonfiction. And when you're getting ready for the IELTS exam, the materials are nonfiction. They come from reality. So reading a book on mythology in English is not a good idea. It's not going to help you unless you get really lucky and there's a reading passage on mythology. But Unlikely. So you should read nonfiction novels. That means real life. Novels such as biographies. Okay. Biographies are really good. Um, Zainab says like historical novels. Yeah, those are good. I highly recommend biographies. So if there's a person that you've always been interested about, uh, then read about them. So Steve Jobs has an incredible biography out there. Um, Edison, uh, Nikola Tesla. Okay, there are a lot of um, Gandhi. Has an incredible biography out there. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell Gandhi. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, so find a person that you're interested in and read about their life in English, okay? Read about their accomplishments. Uh, what they've done growing up, those will be good books for you, okay? Um, Amar, I'm not going to um, suggest, uh, thank you, um, I'm not going to suggest um, the book for you, Amar, because you know who you like. Uh, here's the question, Amar. Uh, what are you interested in? So what kind of a topic are you interested in? What's your major in school? Uh, let's say that you're interested in computers or business. Maybe read the biography of Steve Jobs. If you're interested in engineering, electricity, 
uh, read the life of Edison or uh, Nikola Tesla, okay? Um, there are a lot of amazing uh, books out there. Um, if you're interested in uh, leadership, um, read the life of uh, Gandhi, okay? So it's up to you to choose who interests you in this world. And I'm sure there's someone. Read that in English. That will work, okay? So, um, and be active, okay? Be an active reader. That means pay attention to visualizing. Um, write down new words. Okay, so spend at least 30 minutes each day reading a book that you choose. It should be nonfiction. Uh, think of a biography. Biography is about a person's life. Choose a biography. Read it. Okay. Enjoy it. Choose someone that you're that you like that you're interested in. Read 30 minutes. Read aloud. So read at least for 15 minutes aloud. Now I said you your daily study plan must include at least 60 to 90 minutes. That means that you should read another 30 minutes. So read another. 30 minutes of IELTS passages and scientific articles, okay? Uh, some magazines that you might want to read are like National Geographic, Psychology Today, Okay, psychology today or uh, scientific America. And most of these you can read online. So those are some good magazines to read. If you can get your hands on some high school textbooks, that's really good. Okay, if you can find some English high school textbooks, that's great. Okay, read them. All right, those are all some good uh, ones to read for another 30 minutes. Here, let's, uh, let's do a little bit of reading. Might as well put our money where our mouth is. Um, let me just jump to uh, some reading here. I'll randomly jump to a page. Hopefully we'll find something to read here. Let's read a little bit together. Let's read a little bit aloud and then we'll get back to some questions and answers. Okay. Here we go. So let's read this one. This is a fun text. Read with me. So here we go. Let's go members. Why study philosophy? There are two schools of thought when it comes to education. One side believes that education should give students tool for success in life, while the other side believes that education itself is an important goal. No area of study brings this debate to a head more than the study of philosophy. Philosophy, for those who belong to the practical side of the debate, is an utter waste of time. Philosophy provides very few tools for success in life, they say. A common question for someone studying philosophy is, what are you going to do with it? Those on the other side of the debate, those who value education for knowledge itself, can see that the study of philosophy has many important benefits. The word philosophy derives from the Greek for love of wisdom, just as it was in ancient Greece, it is those people who love wisdom, knowledge, and truth who study philosophy. However, we do not live in ancient Greece, where people had slaves to do all of their chores, such as working in the fields. So what place does philosophy have in today's society? 
If philosophy teaches us anything, it teaches the ability to reason. With reason, one can construct, analyze, and find faults in arguments. For example, if all men are mortal, and Socrates is mortal, is Socrates a man? What if we change the question to, if all men are mortal, and Socrates is a man, is Socrates mortal? Once a student is schooled in the ability to reason, he will see right away that these two questions are very different. As it turns out, the first is an invalid argument, while the second is very much valid. Perhaps the next question of the skeptic is, what is the value of reason? This is a very important question. Surely, if philosophy is all about learning to reason, then an ability to reason must be a valuable trait. Arguably, the ability to reason forms the foundation for all knowledge. If an individual holds an opinion which is believed wrong or incorrect, it could be important to convince them of the right opinion. There are a number of ways to attempt this. They can be intimidated, belittled, or bullied into accepting the opposite opinion. Having a strong opinion does not mean the opinion is any more correct. Many people have strong opinions on all manner of subjects, but of course, strength of feeling does not correspond to validity. And it follows that someone who belittles another person or another's opinion is not necessarily the one in the right. When two men engage in a fist fight over whose opinion is correct, the winner of the fight may not have the correct opinion, but merely the correct fighting technique. In any disagreement, the right tools must be employed. In a battle of brawn, the tool is strength. In a battle of wills, the tool is perseverance. In a battle of words, the tool is reason. When arguing with reason, facts of the matter are stated and conclusions are drawn from those facts accordingly. Reason is fundamental to almost every intellectual endeavor one can imagine. Just as mathematics is fundamental to almost every scientific endeavor, maths is the language of science just as reason is the language of discourse and debate. Accordingly, just as society needs experts in mathematics, so society needs experts in reason. The argument should follow that as we all learn mathematics as children and young adults, so we should learn the precepts of reason. Above all, philosophy is pure. Certain, certainly, reason is useful in all areas of life, but that does not mean that philosophy's value lies only in its usefulness in the day-to-day. -day. Philosophy is the pursuit of knowledge for the sake of knowledge. There is a beautiful human quality expressed in this. Every other academic discipline is knowledge for some empirical pursuit. For example, engineering is knowledge so that we can construct buildings. Chemistry is knowledge so that we can make drugs and biology is knowledge so that we can stay healthy. Philosophy has no tangible outcome outside of the pure pursuit of knowledge. The only other discipline which comes close to this regard is mathematics. One is purity in numbers and the other is purity in words. All right, so hopefully you read with me nice and loud. That's what you should do every day is just read nice and loud not necessarily to answer questions, okay? You don't always have to focus on, okay, so what are these questions with this passage? But just reading it to try to understand it. Don't be shy to reread the same passage if you didn't understand it, okay? And of course, look for new words. So that was just a quick reading exercise. All right. 
So Amar is asking, how about reading law books? Amar, you can read law books, but only if you can understand them. Um, Manal is asking another question. So again, remember, members, this is a Q&A. It's a question and answer session with a little bit of practice thrown into it, like that reading. Um, Manal is asking a question. Uh, for writing, what do I do to get a good score in part two essay? Okay, Manal, that's a good question. We'll take that one. So Manal says... What do I do to get a good score in task two essay? All right, there are definitely some important answers to that question, Manal. Welcome, Prut Virai Taipara. Welcome as a new member. Um, okay, let's help Manal with this. So members, help me answer Manal's question. So what should you do to get a good band score uh, for the task to essay? What are some really important elements to keep in mind? Hi, me here, another new member. Back to back. Hello. Welcome. Make sure to send me an email with your membership level so I can hook you up with some perks. Okay, so uh, students, let's help out Manal first and then we'll look at some other questions, okay? Yes, Preeti, it is good to, it is very good to copy English speakers to improve fluency, mimicry, it's called mimicry. Kamlesh says, what strategy should I apply if I have one week to prepare? Kamlesh, focus on improving communication skills with critical thinking. Um, I'll come back to those questions, Kamlesh, Preeti. Uh, let's help, help out Manal, uh, first of all, here with Manal's question. So we don't want to jump around too much, otherwise we'll get lost. Uh, Manal is asking, what do I do to get a good score on task to essay? And Kamlesh, this is important for you if you have one week to prepare because this is connected with uh, improving communication in your essay. So what should I do? Sheng Hung and the other members who are in the chat, who else is in here? Amar's in here, Nguyen Viet's in here, Zainab's in here. Alexander may be still in here somewhere. Um, what should Manal do to get a good score for the task to essay? So Mihir says, read the maximum number of sample essays to generate content. No, Mihir, I disagree. I think that's kind of a waste of time. Um, the reason why Mihir is because essay questions are always unique. So you don't want to think about a template if you write a template type of response uh, for your task two, it's not going to help you get a high score. In fact, it's going to keep your score low. So me here, what I mean is like, if you write, for example, a thesis like in this essay, uh, I will discuss uh, the reasons uh, people should ride their bikes to work instead of drive a car, driving a car. So this type of statement in the introduction will get you a low band score, okay? Um, it's template type, it's not at the high school or university college level. Um, and even though it's okay English, it's poor writing, especially in the academic. So this is not a good sentence for the introduction, okay? So this is why templates are not effective, okay? Okay, Vanity, I got your question too, but let's stick with Manal's here um, and uh, go from there. So Preeti says the first thing is 
Uh, understand the question and paraphrase it. Yeah, and Preeti, I'm going to translate your suggestion to what you actually achieve by doing that. So uh, read the question carefully, paraphrase it. Um, it means make sure to answer the question very specifically with details. Okay. So again, the question Manal is asking is what do I do to get a good score on task two essays? Make sure to answer the question very specifically with details. Okay. So if, for example, if the question is, um, uh, let me see, instead of making up a question suddenly, I'll bring about a question here. Bear with me here. Okay, so here is a task two question. Uh, write about the following topic. Banks should receive billions of dollars in assistance from their governments during a financial crisis that was in large part their fault. Okay, so here, if you start writing an essay about giving money to companies or businesses, okay? Okay, so let's say I write, people should not give money to businesses if they make mistakes. All right, this will be a low score for this response because first of all the question is about the government it's not about people and we're talking about uh, the government helping banks not simply just businesses for making mistakes so I have to be much more specific so instead what I should write is something like uh, governments should not assist financial institutions when they commit mistakes and get into money troubles. Okay, so that would be a much more accurate sentence. So you have to be very specific, okay? Of course, all right. Um, and uh, Viet Nguyen says don't go off topic in task two stick with your topic stick with your argument okay um, Shang Hung says follow writing strategy four paragraphs each paragraph has its structure um, yeah Shang Hung so it's not even writing strategy it's just called essay structure so follow essay structure which means, Manal, have an introduction. Your introduction needs a hook, background, and a direct thesis. Then you need body one that has a topic sentence, an explanation, an example, and a connecting concluding sentence. Okay, then uh, you need body two and body two is basically the same as body one but you don't need the connecting concluding sentence. Okay, and then you need a conclusion. Your conclusion needs to have your points restated. It needs to have your argument strengthened and a take home message. Now this isn't simply writing strategy here. This is 
standard writing structure, especially for academic essays. So you need to follow that. Uh, I have a question for you students, and this is very important for Manal to know how to get a high score on her task two essay. Um, when I say direct thesis, what does that mean? So what is a direct thesis? What do I mean by direct thesis? And I'll come back to some of the other questions that you've put up there. I see that. Um, and I think I'll be answering some of them with these anyway. Okay. So what do I do when I write a direct thesis? What does that actually mean? Truth Viraj, I'll suggest something in a second for your question as well. Don't worry. So Mihir Rana says, inform the reader what will be next in the below body paragraphs. Um, yes, Mihir, uh, can you be a little bit clearer? Yeah, so Amar Wadi says, actually state the points that you're going to discuss in the passage and include your opinion. Yeah, so that's very important to do for a high quality university college level essay is clearly with parallel grammar state the points to be discussed in your essay. Okay, so Remember, Manal, how I said uh, I will discuss the reasons people should ride their bikes instead of driving their car? This is called an indirect thesis. It's poor writing, and it shows the examiner that this is probably a student who just practiced a lot of template or example essays. They're trying to copy those sentences, fit it into this context or content, and it's not going to get a band score above six or it has to be exceptionally well written to get even a 6.5. That doesn't make sense. So a much better uh, thesis statement would be, uh, a direct thesis statement would be something like, um, people should ride their bikes instead of driving their cars to work in order to improve their improve health and reduce pollution okay so this thesis is a band seven eight nine level essay thesis this is a band five six level thesis in this essay, I will discuss the reasons people should ride their bikes to work instead of driving their car. Duh, that's what the question's asking. Of course, that's what you're going to do. I hope so. But here, it's much more effective. People should ride their bikes instead of drive their cars to work because or in order to improve health and reduce pollution. Okay, now you're giving me some good information. You're telling me your paragraph one will be about riding the bike instead of driving the car because it's better for your health. And in the second one, you'll write about um, reducing pollution. So it's much more effective, okay? So uh, those are a few, Manal, of the important steps. You need to write at least 250 words. You need to have a direct thesis. You need to have good structure you need to write in detail an original essay about that question, okay? All right, uh, I'm gonna hop back really quickly Alexander, can I get problems if I never write a point above? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking with that, Alexander. Uh, uh, Viraj is asking, uh, how do I answer true, false, not given questions? I think this passage that I zipped past 
has some true false not given. Let me see. Um, maybe not. Uh, true false not given, Prithviraj. There's a video uh, for that on the channel. Um, and the best way to do it is to use uh, computer logic, the if this, then that logic for the passage. Let me just find one here for you. I'll find one real quick. Okay, that's probably making you guys dizzy, so just give me a second. So here's a passage, Prithviraj. Um, this passage is about tigers, okay? So animals of different stripes. The passage is about tigers. Um, and um, the passage compares Siberian and Bengal tigers, okay? Now this passage has some yes, no, not given questions. Here, there's four of them. Uh, yes, no, not given. True, false, not given very similar strategy okay you use logic don't read this question before you read the passage because it's confusing okay so leave this until you uh finish the passage and then after you read the passage ask and answer some questions with logic okay so firstly um read the statement, both animals are primarily meat eaters. And then ask the question, is this important for the topic discussing two kinds of tigers? So this, is, this passage compares two types of tigers. Is it important to know what the tigers eat or what kind of diet they have? Is that important, Prithviraj? Alexander, Preeti, students, if you're reading a passage that speaks of tigers and compares them. Is it important to know, do you think the author will mention what kind of food the tigers eat? So that's my first question when I get to a true, false, not given or a yes, no, not given. I ask, is it important for this topic? Okay, and hopefully most of you right now are thinking yes, Yes, it's important. So if it's important, then I know that it's given. Okay, so now I know that it has to be either true or false or yes or no, of course. So Zainab's like, yes, okay. Now I need to figure out if it's true. So is it true that tigers are mostly meat eaters? Yes, it's true. So my answer is yes, okay. Um, the gestation period for females is about four years. Gestation means pregnancy. So is it important if I'm writing a passage about the life of tigers, is it important to know how long, uh, tigers are pregnant? And you're going to notice something interesting here, members that you might not have realized before is that with yes, no, not given questions, careful with this, but you can actually get quite a few of them correct without even reading. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a weird trick. Um, but, uh, I've tried this on original exams that I've never seen before. And I would say I got about 70, 80% correct answers. So, but you have to understand the sentence, of course. So yeah, I would say that it's important. So then if it's important, it's given. Okay, um, and 
Is it true that female tigers are pregnant for four years? So yeah, I would agree. If I'm reading a passage about tigers, it will probably mention something about their um, reproduction. So having their cubs, their babies. So it's probably true. It's probably in there somewhere that it will tell me how long tigers are pregnant. So is it true that a female tiger is pregnant for four years? Okay. Do you think that's true? Can you imagine that? A tiger being pregnant for four years? Now, hopefully some of you remember your simple biology here, right? The bigger the animal, the longer we're pregnant. I don't think there's any animal in the world that's pregnant for four years. That would not be very effective for evolution, right? So even the biggest animals like elephants and whales, they're not pregnant for that long. So there's no way that a tiger will be pregnant for four years. That's just silly, right? So yes, no. Uh, and then I keep going here. So young tigers need their mother for survival during their first half year. So young tigers need their mother for survival during their first half year. Is it important, talking about tigers, how long the little baby tigers need their mother um, for survival? If you write a passage about tigers and their life, do you think you will write about how long they need it? Yes, I agree, so it's given. So do you think that a baby tiger or a young tiger needs its mother to survive for the first half year? Is that true? Do you think that it's true that a cub tiger? Or do you think that uh, when they're born at six months, they can run away and uh, kill some uh, animals and eat them? Maybe some grasshoppers or some insects, <laughs> right? But I don't think that a six-month-old tiger is an effective hunter, okay? Let's be realistic. I'm sure if we imagine this little baby tiger, maybe a little bit bigger at six months, but they're still going to be tiny, okay? So I would probably say confidently that, yes, a six-month-old tiger most likely still needs mommy to get proper food, right? So I would, have, I would have no problem, even without reading this passage, to write yes, no, yes for these first three, okay? Killing is a rite of passage which shows a cub is ready to leave its mother. If I'm writing a passage comparing these two types of tigers, do you think I will write about whether or not killing is important for the tiger to show its mom that it's ready to leave the nest, ready to leave home. Is that important? Is it important? Amara says probably not so important. It's maybe too much detail. Yeah, so if, it's, if you're thinking that's probably too much detail when you're talking about tigers, so then that would be not given. And in fact, that those are all correct answers so far. So um, Pruth uh, Viraj, that is the right strategy for yes, no, not given. So read the passage first. After you read the passage, it's going to be even much more effective uh, to do this. You'll be even much more confident in these answers. And then go through a logical series of steps. Read the statement. Ask yourself, is it important for the passage? If you think, yes, it's important, then it's probably given and the answer is somewhere in the passage. Then you just need to figure out if it's true or not. If your answer is maybe, then you can maybe search for some key words, okay? But uh, it's a very quick and effective way to get some good marks. Okay. All right, so that's uh, an answer for the yes, no, not given for one of our new members. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, Puthviraj, uh, you are most welcome. All right, uh, somebody was really asking me to help them out with a question, and uh, it was Mihir Rana. So, um, 
Nihir says, is it a right direct thesis? No, that wasn't it. Yes, there are. Yes, so, okay, so that's me here and Preeti communicating together. All right, that's fine. Preeti's asking an interesting question. Preeti's asking, sir, can you um, suggest to me the best English speaker? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, Preeti, but... I do recommend that when you're learning your speaking in English, if possible, focus on American English. And I'm not saying that because I'm Canadian and I'm arrogant about that, but I'm saying that because American English is um, easier to learn and to uh, understand than British English. It's, it's a clear form of English. So if you can if you've already started with british and you've spent a lot of time fine don't change now but if you're still open to american or british i suggest american simply because it's a clearer form of english it's easier to understand not just for international students but even for english speakers and that's probably a big reason why american english is more common around the world than british english Okay? You will find American English spoken more readily around the world than British English. And one reason for that is it's easier, it's clearer, it's simpler to understand. Alexander, I never did get clarity on that question of yours, what you meant by that. Okay, and pr Vanity Sean is really pushing for this. So how do I formulate the questions in answering the what, why, and how for the topic and controlling idea? Uh, Vanity, that's a good question, okay? So uh, this is for task two. Um, Vanity, okay, I'm going to jump to this real quick. So getting back to task two here for just a moment. Let me see if I can quickly get a task two up for us here. Okay. All right. So, um, first of all, vanity, it's really important to correctly identify the topic and the controlling idea. So are higher taxes or lower taxes better for society? Okay. What's the topic taxes? We're talking about taxes. Okay. Um, so, uh, what are taxes? Taxes, so ask the full question, Vanity. So the trick is ask, always ask the full question. So what are taxes? Why do we have taxes? How do taxes work? Okay. Then for the controlling idea, go through the same steps. So here the controlling idea is higher taxes are better for society or lower taxes are better for society. What are high taxes for society? Well, those are probably taxes over 20, 30% of the income. Why do we have high taxes for society? Well, we have high taxes for society so that the government can pay more for infrastructure, for schools, for healthcare. How do higher taxes benefit society? There is more money collected by the government, which allows the government to spend more on building schools and roads. And that way, the cost is shared among the population. So the trick vanity is to really focus on the full question and answer. Okay. Uh, vanity, I recommend trying uh, some of this. Okay. So take a task two. Identify the topic, identify the controlling idea, go through the steps of what, why, how, send it to my email, and I'll let you know what's going on and if you're on the right track. How does that sound? Okay. And other students can try this as well. All right, members, that's all the time I have for today's Q&A class. Coming up in 30 minutes, we will do uh, speaking part three. 
questions and strategies and practice. So that class will be focusing on speaking part three. Everybody will be welcomed to join into the chat. Again, check us out at aehelp.com, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for tons more strategies and help videos, practice exams, computer-based, paper-based, all those goodies on those websites and download our app, Academic IELTS Help. You're most welcome, Shang Hung. You are very welcome, Vanity. Preeti, have a great rest of the day and hopefully see you in 30 minutes. Bye for now.